This is a Minecraft bot that I coded to be controlled through Discord reactions. If I tap any of these reactions on my phone, it does the corresponding action, allowing me to control it inside an actual unmodded Minecraft server. In this video, I'll show you the code and explain exactly how it works. The first step in this project is making a Discord bot, which you can do through the Discord developer portal. Um, there are already other tutorials on this part, so I'm going to skip it. The next thing we're going to want is a config.json file, which holds some very important settings for our bot. First, it holds the server address we want the bot to connect to. Second, it contains the Minecraft server's port number. And thirdly, it holds the key to the Discord bot. The main code for the bot is held in index.js. For interacting with Discord, I'm using the discord.js library. And for Minecraft, I'm using the Mindflayer library. And I'm also importing the data we keep in the config file. To make the bot connect to Discord, we make a Discord client. When we create the client, we need to register a bunch of different intents. You can think of intents as permissions the bot needs. Here we're requesting permission for guilds, guild messages, message content, and guild message reactions. In this context, guilds means servers. I don't know why they call them guilds in the code, but if I had to guess, it'd be because when you're working in code you already have servers and clients, and so this stops things from getting mixed up. Or maybe it's some archaic thing from olden times. Once we've created our client, we can have it log in using the token. On the Minecraft side of things, I'm using Mindflayer's createBot function and specifying a username as well as the host and port that were in the config file. When the bot's finished logging into both Discord and Minecraft, we call the start function. This is all made a lot easier because Discord.js and Mindflayer have very similar APIs. When the bot first starts, we want it to send the message that we use to control it. The first part in sending a message is to get the channel we want the bot to send the message to. Discord channels have IDs that you can find by clicking this button here. Then I specify what I want the message to say, and then I use channel.send to send the message. Then we can use the dot react method to react to the message with a bunch of different emojis. And the last thing we want to do in this function is to take this message ID and save it in a global variable for later. On their own, the reactions on this message are meaningless. But the action map changes that. It maps each reaction to an asynchronous function that contains code that we want the bot to execute when that reaction is used. To make the bot actually use these functions, there's an event listener on the Discord client for when the message receives a reaction. An important step here is making sure the message isn't sent by a bot and is on the message we sent earlier which is why we saved the ID. Then we need to perform the function corresponding to the reaction that was just used. And then we remove the reaction from the message. One more important little detail in this code is adding an auto jump to the bot, because otherwise it would be virtually impossible to have a proper jump using reactions. I do this by regularly checking if the bot is horizontally collided with anything, and if it is, we jump. And now I can use the reactions in Discord to control the bot. And one last extra little thing. If I go into spectator mode, and spectate the bot, I can control it from a first person perspective, which makes it a little bit more immersive. There's a link to the code for the bot in the description. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like and subscribing. I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks with my next video. Thanks for watching.